Welcome. <laughs> Hi guys. Welcome to Simon on the Sofa. I've been having uh, fun with this huge singing bowl this morning, uh, which my friend has just shown me. Am I okay to leave this here? Is that okay then, yeah? It's not going to look like I'm, I'm eating a big bowl of cornflakes. Um, hi guys, welcome uh, to another episode of Simon on the Sofa. Today I'm with Jan Tara. Hello Jan Tara. Hello Simon. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Um, Today's the first time I've met Jan Tara, so um, as always, where this journey goes, nobody knows. Um, so um, some of you may know Jan Tara. If you do, then enjoy. And if you don't, then welcome. Let's see what we uncover. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Let's go with, um, how are you feeling? Mm. I'm feeling very relaxed. Very in this space. With all the sounds that we played earlier. Beautiful. And you was doing some nice uh, vocal sounds as well? Yes. Lots of singing every day. Yeah. Especially when I shower. <laughs> when nobody's hearing or more people are hearing. I sing in the shower, but it's, it's not too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's good. When I'm showering and playing music and singing along with it, it is a very, I feel that is a very powerful space for me to express myself. Mm. And especially the acoustics is really good. So you express yourself more in the shower? Yes. Nice. And yeah. so tell me, okay, so tell me a little about, um, tell me a little bit about your singing. If you call it singing, would you call it singing? I call it an expression of my emotion, of my thoughts. And I express sounds through a feeling. So usually I have a picture in my mind or a feeling and then I use a sound or a tone, a note to express that idea. And then as the story unfolds, when the first sound started coming out and then the picture starts to appear. For example, when I think of um, the clouds in my mind and I will make a sound, it could be beautiful clouds that is by the window right now. Very naturally this bird just appear and join in. Starts to look down. I just let this beautiful picture just bring me along with the sounds wherever that it takes and being created in that moment mm -hmm. exactly yeah so the sounds allow you to just express whatever it is that comes through whatever that it is that yeah. it comes through yeah sometimes i go into a trance which is a repetitive set of melodies or rhythm and what i mean that repetitive set of melodies for a long period of time and I realize I'm stuck. <laughs> I need to get out of that space. So I usually inject what I call a accidental note. An accidental note? Yes, and this deliberately. Is, this, is a, this is to escape <laughs> from the rhythm that's become like almost like a habit. Yes. Yeah? So I can go higher and higher and higher. Well, feeling more expensive and more and more expensive. Mm. As long as it's a melody that I feel really comfortable and that it has the potential to allow me to expand my feelings and my thoughts, and I stay with that. If I feel stuck, then I inject accidental notes in there. Yeah, to just break that flow. Break that flow <coughs> deliberately. And do you, so obviously that was a, a, a beautiful sound feeling from 
looking outside at, like you said, the wonderful clouds, which are, mm. it's a beautiful day today, which is, I always say most days are beautiful, even if it's cloudy outside, I, I'm seeing the beauty in those clouds. So, um, so then if you're feeling, obviously we're emotional beings and we're up and down most days with, mm -hmm. you know, a whole array of emotions, depending on what comes into our reality. So if you do the same, if angry, sad, happy, confused, frustrated, annoyed, anything, just play with that sound still as a form of expression, release and transmutation. There was once when I was, well, when I was back home in Singapore and I was in a lift and I was feeling, I can't remember exactly what the story was, not important, but it was feeling frustration, I was feeling angry and I was feeling irritated by this constant repetitive thought in my mind. So the lift usually takes about not more than 40 seconds for me to go from the first story to all the way to the tenth. Mm -hmm. And I decided to make a sound with the intention of breaking this thought pattern. And it's just tone, one single tone, like something like ah, and I just did that. And it just opened up and all these thoughts that was previously in my mind disappeared. Beautiful, yeah. And then I felt liberation. It's like, I should have done this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> but why didn't I do that? Because yeah. I was in a trance. I was experiencing this thought again and again and again and again until it reaches its, its limit of wanting to, to feel better again mm. than the idea of expressing, which is expression is what, singing is one of my least way of resistance of allowing myself to come back into alignment with who I am. Yeah, totally. Which is what people do when they're singing as well anyway, you know. For example, the singing in the shower analogy, mm -hmm. which people feel sometimes in the shower, you know, we have that sort of uh, metaphor for, you know, just singing out loud and being exactly who you are, you know. Yes. And some people do it through dance, don't they, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like dance like nobody's looking and, you know, and, and, and be in your space. And mm -hmm. that's an amazing form of, of, uh, of like you said, um, the path of least resistance, isn't it? It's a really amazing way of just getting that energy out of your body, which is because energy is energy and it needs to go somewhere, doesn't it? Yes. So if it's if it's contained and we dance, for example, we can we can let it flow. Um, I like what you said about breaking the cycle because because our emotions fall into that, don't they? Like when you were mm. saying you hear a rhythm and it's like you know your or a note that's in a cycle, and it's like and then you break it. Mm. It's almost like we're like that, aren't we, with our uh, with our day-to-day -day emotions. So, for example, let's take anger or frustration because I sense a lot of that in a lot of people that I'm meeting at the moment. Um, and they're in that, you know, habitual cycle. But usually and I ask people when they're feeling angry or feeling depression or whatsoever, what do they want to experience in their life from from these negative emotions, so to speak. What would they like to experience out of this? What do they want to experience more of this? And it's usually, basically 100% all the time is, I want to feel good again. <laughs> so then I ask them, is your desire strong enough? Because desire is an energy. And with no desire wanting to feel good, you won't want to do something to break that cycle itself. So when people are constantly in a trance, experiencing their own emotions and and getting trapped in that vibration, then it has to build up with a certain level of desire, of intensity for that, mm. in order for them to, to finally say, oh, I had enough of that. I want to feel better now. I want to feel good again. Then they break free from it. Yeah. The desire must be there. Yeah, which is almost like the break, like you said, the, you know, the accident or break in, in, in the uh, no. It's being aware yeah. that I've had enough or that this isn't serving me at, at some level. Um. The string, the, the, there is a energy works in, in this way f in my experience. When one person experience extreme contraction, they will experience expansion at the same time. It's like a spring. So if I compress this spring, like my emotion, and suppressed it, it will gain a lot of energy. And if I released it, it will just explode. Mm. So how can I allow my, how can I allow myself in order to expand again? Is I need to let go of the power and the strength, the resistance to hold on to that spring. So but sometimes people can't do that. They need to compress it, incompress it, incompress it until a certain 
point in time, then they finally said, I can't compress it anymore. Mm. And then they released it. So that is a perfect opportunity for a person to experience something greater. Yeah. So when I see two person crawling I, I, or having a heated debate, some people will say that, oh, that's, that's not good. What's happening is not right. It shouldn't, people shouldn't quarrel and things like that. I'll say, wow, that's fantastic. They're having a wonderful experience yes. to expand. Yes. And through that experience, they will see what they would like to experience more out of this. Totally, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me, I come from, um, it's funny you mentioned this because something happened like that with uh, me and my partner recently. And it's very much what, sometimes I don't know if you have this experience, but what we do is, you know, whether you're on a spiritual journey or you're on this so-called positive journey, for example, a lot of people think, oh, okay, my life has to be positive, has to be happy, has to be good all the time, because if it's good and happy, then, then you know, I'm, uh, I'm having the best experience that I can. Whereas often what we're doing then is actually avoiding these um, emotions and these feelings that we're having, which are building up, which are actually, like you just said, full of possibility and opportunity and growth. Mm. And when you let those out, when you express them, and you step into, if you, you know, I call it value and worth, for example, and just say, actually, I, you know, I am feeling crap today. I am feeling shit. But you know what? I want to tell you. I want to share that. You know, you can actually get a lot of elevation from that, can't you? And I don't mean telling everybody to just start shouting, <laughs> shout, shouting at everybody today, <laughs> telling your mum and your partners and everybody else. I just had enough. But, you know, but on one level, because you know the saying where... Um, and you see it in relationships. I mean, sometimes I've looked at them as being quite dysfunctional relationships, but you know, when people are always arguing in their uh, intimate relationships, for example, they're always arguing, bicker, 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 bicker. But then after that initial argument, there seems to be a peace and they seem to get on really well mm. until the next time. Does that make sense? Suppression and management is very different. Mm -hmm. mm. So when emotion is being suppressed, it usually is like what you say, like they, they just, keep it in there and then wait till one day it just comes out and bites on, bite them back again. But when you manage it is when you're aware that you are feeling uncomfortable and you're not wanting to run away from it, but you're willing to open up a space to look at it and say that how does my inner being see this? How does, how does my inner mind see this? And if I am feeling infinite possibilities and a potential of who I am, then how will that perspective see the situation? Mm -hmm. And that would change a big thing because the main statement that I want to share with people really is, um, it's not about changing the world, but changing the way you see the world. Mm -hmm. Then that's when everything just becomes so beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Because we don't need to break it down physically in order to rebuild something just to satisfy an empty feeling that we have in there. Yeah. And almost going through that breaking down process thinking that you're, you're getting something from it. Mm. It's almost letting go of the resistance that we're putting up to the, to the world already. Mm. You know? Yeah, I like that. I like that. So, um, so how did that happen for you? How did that awareness become more apparent to you? Obviously you've nurtured that, I'm sure, over time, and I know you do workshops, etc., and have experiences, but... I would say that for many years in my life, I find it, I found it in the past to be extremely difficult to communicate with human beings. And the reason behind it is because that people don't really express truly what they feel mm -hmm. within. They use words to cover up what they truly feel within. And when I hear those words coming up from their mouth, and it doesn't match with the feeling that I get from it, then I feel like, why are we having this conversation when you're not really meaning what you're saying? Mm, totally. So I, I decided not to speak with people for a long period of time. But I spend a lot of time focusing into my inner emotions and feel like, why am I feeling this way in relationship to how I see the world? Why is it that I meet this group of people only? Why is it that this group of people changes over time? Why this, why that? I'm a very curious person. I keep asking questions every day. I believe everyone asks questions. I ask them like thousands and thousands of questions and I, I like to know 
um, not just where I come from, but if I have a thought, what does this thought goes to? If I have emotions, and if I project that to you, how will you receive it? And if there's ever a chance for you to feel my thoughts as one, then do I ever need to speak to you again okay. verbally? So all these kind of thoughts, and if, if, if I'm a sofa itself and you sit on me, how would I feel? <laughs> all I love this. It. So once I, I spend a lot of time meditating and contemplating into my inner space, how I perceive this world, that I live in, and I realize that everything that I'm observing, everything that I'm interacting with, is a reflection, and it is a vibrational resonance of how I feel within. For example, we could have ten people here in a group, and I could connect with one particular person really well, mm -hmm. but not the rest of them. But yet, another person could come in and could connect with all 10 of them. But why am I only able to resonate with one? What makes us so different? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but why, why can't I be so expansive and so open to interact with everyone and anyone? Is it because that I feel that like I'm small? Is it because that I feel that I don't understand that person? Or I don't understand myself. What is? Why do I feel that? And I start to see something beautiful coming out of it, and I see it as different facets of me living in this world in different faces, and that they're all living separate lives, and whatever that they're experiencing, they are contributing to the collective experience that I'm having. So as Yantara, I don't really see myself as an individual mm. as much, but rather as a collective mind of total experience. So I constantly change the way I speak, the kind of thoughts and emotions that I have, the kinds of belief system that I have, the kind of clothing that I wear. It just keeps changing. And that my friends keep looking at me and say, I can never understand you. Because you always feel so different. Every time I interact with you, you always feel so different. And I say, there's the only constant thing in this universe is change. And everybody avoids it. Everyone avoids it. Everybody avoids change. <laughs> everybody is absolutely in resistance to the only thing that is, that is <clears throat> which is change, constantly. And in order to even be here now, I don't even know how old you are, but I'm, I always say the wrong age, I think I'm 34. To even be here now, to sit here like this, I've had to continuously change. Every single cell, I mean, you know, is not the same and is constantly changing. And for me to even age another so-called year, because years are man-made, but whatever is happening in that flow of change, then in order to even change to that, yes. it has to change. It has to change. It has to. And it will change. Yeah. It's a natural thing. Yeah. So if you can embrace that experience and be in that flow of, of change, mm. that surge in energy of change, like you said, not as an individual, but as a collective force of surge, then you even just by having that perception, you change the whole of your reality yes. and, how it, and how it's perceived and how you are in it, isn't it? Because we always, do you find or <clears throat> on your journey that we're always, I'm like you, is very much constantly asking questions. And I say to people, keep asking questions, it's good. Because each question leads to another question. You're never going to get the answer to all the questions. Just keep asking. <laughs> Stop trying to find the answer, is what I say. <clears throat> and just go with the question, be with the question. Um, yeah, do you, do you find that there's, there, there's a very much, uh, and, and this is for you, not, not what you've experienced with other people, but do you find yourself the more you go along realizing that you know nothing? The more I realize that I know nothing. Yeah. Paradox. Yeah. In my experience, yes. When I feel that I'm in what I call the stillness point in me, then I experience all the spaces at the same time and experience none of it at the same time. So in relation to that question and that experience, yes, the more I 
know something, the more I do not know what it is. Mm. There is always an infinite wave upon waves of clarity that will never end. There will always be this infinite flow of transformation of the mind, and it never ends. And as long as I don't see myself as wanting to reach an end, then I'm the transformation itself. Mm, exactly. Firstly, I know that the waves are coming. Then I learn to ride the waves. Then I become the waves. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Learn to surf. <coughs> learn to surf. Surf the waves. Surf the waves. Surf the waves at least for a while until you fall off the board, and then just dive into the sea. And just, enjoy uh, that and too. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah. <coughs> and then become one with the sea, perfect. <laughs> then you are the ocean, then you are the ocean. There you go. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful answer as well to, uh, um, because I think that, yeah. I, I feel there's a very much a, there's a resistance to our current state of um, reality or, or awareness within us as individuals. I speak for myself there was for a long time very much a resistance because as we, as we enter into that unknown nothingness, as it were, <clears throat> you have to be ready to let go of everything that you perceived prior. And I think that, that there's a holding on, or there was for me <clears throat> at times, there was very much a holding on to those identities of how you think reality is. <laughs> Did you experience? I learned that a lot through yeah. facilitating workshops all these years. And I love compiling my own notes. And how I do it is I sit in front of the computer, turn on my Microsoft Word, and I just tune in. And when I feel good and I feel expansion in my mind, then I start typing. So when I start typing and pages by pages and all that, and as I read, and each time I read them, it feels better and better, it feels good. I don't need to change it because I come from a space of expansiveness. Mm. So the words that it comes out are always aligned to that feeling of expansiveness. And yet at the early stages of me conducting workshop itself, I've written a lot of things through, based upon my own experiences. And over time, over the years, I realized that some of them could be fine-tuned. So there's a part of me was thinking, well, if I were to change it, does it make what I've said in the previous years invalid? And what if all these participants were come before and then they learn something wrong? Have I, have I taught something incorrect to them? I said no, because at that point in time it was true to my being and that I embraced that. But now I've changed and that I, need, I want to honor that too. Mm. So I changed the notes and made that make me feel good. So I, I learned through a lot by just changing my notes and up updating it, fine tuning it. Yeah. Mm. And being where you said earlier in that, in that flow of change, which you are the change anyway. So everything that, even if you look at how reality is unfolding, you know, I know I, always, I use this analogy a lot, but the earth, was, the earth was flat, the earth is round. I mean, you know, we're constantly moving on. So everything that we're saying today is, is where, I'm not even gonna say we, there's no real we, but is where the, the, the surge of energy that we're creating right now on this lovely green sofa, mm -hmm. you know, if we speak again in a year's time, you know, there could be, who knows, where that flow of energy, you know, takes us. And also how we come to articulate that, because there's another, there's another sometimes um, block, but I don't mean block in a negative way, but also a, uh, a, a block that comes up for a lot of people in the terminology and the words of how we articulate nothing, because really we're trying to articulate something beyond words, aren't we, when we start to move um, beyond form. And like you said, you're not, you're not you, you're not an individual. So when you start to share that with people, that, that can be quite, whoa, have you taken drugs? <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes back with the same, which is, if I've experienced everything, then I've experienced nothing. If I experience nothing, then I experience everything. So when we say that we connect with the collective, then I'm not an individual. If I'm not an individual, 
I'm the collective, I'm not the collective and an individual, but can I be both at the same time? Yes, I can. And yes, we all can. We, we are here as an evidence of that, that we're here as an individual, but yet experiencing it collectively. Mm. But you're doing that anyway, aren't you, as well? Exactly. Regardless. Regardless. Yeah. Whether you know it or not. Exactly, whether you know it or not. And that's, I think, that was, the, that was definitely a magical, uh, a magical moment, mm -hmm. magic moments. That always makes me think of Worth as original. You probably don't, you probably don't know them. Some crazy sweets. I'm sure they're magic moments. Or is it sweets? I've got chocolates coming in my head. Is it magic moments? There was like some sort of chocolate called magic. <laughs> I'm being confirmed by my beautiful friend it was chocolates. Sorry guys, that just, that just come in, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so sh share with me, um, so you've been on this journey of unfolding. You didn't speak to humans for a long time because you know, you was in your own uh, in, in, inner journey, I call it, um, which a lot of people go on and embark on. We're all, we're all experiencing. So, so now, you know, right at this moment, what would you say that you're, uh, you're, you're exploring as an individual? Exactly. Yeah. I'm an explorer. You're right on the dot. Yeah. Mm. And what are you exploring at the moment? Just still more of this? Are you exploring? Is there, is there, is there something that, what's come up in your explorations? There you go. <laughs> As we sit here today. I'm exploring what's in my world. What's in my reality. And how I see it is when I'm on the streets and I see everything as me. And that if I were to walk into a restaurant, I would say, oh, how interesting. This restaurant looks beautiful. It's in my vibration. And I'm able to see it here, right in front of me, as my vibration. How wonderful is that? I can see what's spinning around me all the time. I can see what's inside of me, but I can see what is outside of me, which is me, that which is inside. So this is wonderful. I'm living inside myself mm. on this planet and beyond. And I'm exploring that. I'm exploring what's inside me in this world. I'm exploring the people, the personalities, the colors, the sounds, and I'm exploring how things inside me bump skin once another, and how that creates new wave upon waves upon waves of experience, new interactions. Um, and I found the journey to be really liberating and experiencing the freedom of exploration. The idea of exploring the inner being in this external world comes from the perspective, comes from the intention of being wanting to experience this freely from within. If I can allow myself to experience my world without any limitations, without any um, restrictions, to how my inner world might be, I would just appreciate so much of what's inside, which is outside. Yeah. So it's coming back to pure appreciation and gratitude for the experience that you're having right now. Yes. Yeah, which is, is, is every, if every single person or being or cell or experience on this planet absorbed that for themselves, it would be a complete transformation not to say good or bad, it's, this is still completely magical in itself, but there would be a surge of energy, wouldn't there? Just to have that appreciation of, of, of and gratitude of this unknown experience. Exactly. When a person feels f appreciation in their whole beingness, and they're able to see with this pair of eyes from the perspective of the universe, and when they walk out on the streets, and when they see with this pair of eyes, into someone who is just walking past. And they who see the potential in that person suddenly activates a spark. Mm. And that person, without knowing being watched, suddenly feels inspired. Suddenly feels that it can be possible. My day can be better. Something good can come to me. And it is the same as what others say, oh, I felt an angel that was present in this room. And that I feel, suddenly feel inspired, I feel uplifted. And yet, previously we don't even know that the angel was here. But the angel was looking, 
looking at what? The potential within that person and appreciating that potential. And how can we see the potential of others, of someone else, is when we feel the potential within us. Mm. Then we can be an uplifter. Yeah, you can be an uplifter. And then it has a number of different names, doesn't it? You can be a light worker, an uplifter, you know, a supporter and so on. Yeah. And, what, and what's, um, it's a new language though, isn't it, Yantara? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different language to the language that fundamentally is, is, is predominantly in our, uh, in our current man-made, I'm going to call it man-made reality because I don't think it's the language of, you know, but in, in the man-made re reality. Because I'd, like I'd like to go on this whole, you know, in the experience that I've been on, it's very much like as we're, as we're going through a shift and we're becoming more aware of the change and we're, and we're, moving, and we're moving into that because we have no choice anyway, but you're becoming aware of that change and that shift, then you start to become aware also of the limitations and the, and the, lack, men, you know, the lack mentality that uh, has actually created, uh, um, which we've created and we found ourselves in a lot of people. And as we move in, as, as, as we become that awareness, I don't know if you experienced that because earlier you said that it was seeing that there is no limit and there's, you know, boundless opportunity and potential um, in that space. But in regards to a lot of people out there are holding that, holding on to that lack and limit, you know, which fundamentally is, is I would say, go as far as say, is the foundation of the man-made society that we live in. It's not, it's, it's not coming from a completely supportive, as I say, new language or, or, or expansive vision. Or what would you, what would you, what would you feel to that? Or do you feel it is? Do you feel the society we live in is coming from that, um, you know, aware perspective? I feel that I grew up, I believe that many people do that, um, experience it too, that when we're young, we feel infinite possibilities. We run around, we scream around, and we play and we have no fear we have, well, we don't even have the word, the idea of courage. It's just an expression of our beingness. And as we start growing up, we being told that we shouldn't do this, we should do that, it should be careful about this, and if you don't do this, I'm not going to give you that, and so and so forth. All the conditions being set. So our energy, our, our infinite possibilities become limited possibilities, which is that if I do this, the only reason why I'm doing it is because I'm doing it to please you. Mm -hmm. And that when you feel good, I feel good. So my happiness is dependent on yours. But as I experienced it through my years of growing up, I said strongly to myself that no, this is not what I would like to experience in my world. Is my happiness will forever be dependent on the society and how people see me, how my teachers see me, of how my parents see me, how my friends see me. No, I want to experience who I am I know that I've come to this planet for a reason and for a purpose. And what's that? To have fun. I want to have fun. I want to come Lots here. Of it. <laughs> I want to have fun on this, on this beautiful planet. Yeah. I don't want to be told and said, well, if you don't get a degree, you're not going to get a job and you're not going to get this and that. I said, no. So I've, I had a lot of um, challenge, uh, lots of challenges uh, with uh, people with authorities on that level. And I always get uh, punishment to stand in, in class. <laughs> oh, outside the class oh, outside, was, my, was my one. Oh, oh, outside the class, <laughs> lots of things like that. But how I break through from that is I started saying to myself that if I feel, if I believe in myself that I can be free and that I can express myself and do what I want, in my life, in my own, with my own life, then why am I not able to achieve that yet? What it is that I am constantly reacting or tied down to with the reactions that people have an influence on me. So then I realized, oh, because I was subjected to being influenced. Mm -hmm. My body, my mind, my emotions is, is being trained in a way that is subject to be influenced. Mm -hmm. So I said, what can I do in order to break that influence and become the influence. The influence on yourself or the influence on others? On myself. Mm -hmm. 
how can I guide myself? Then I realized I need willpower. If I have willpower to focus upon what I want, I would definitely get it because in my inner being, I know that it's true. It feels right to think that way. So I did a lot of different kinds of experiments. For example, um, when I was a teenager, I used to love to eat chocolates. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Everyone does that. <laughs> and, and I love to drink Coca-Cola. Oh, it's a bad one. I'd have to talk to you about it. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> go on, go on. And every half an hour or 45 minutes, I'll go to the fridge and I'll open up. I'm like, oh, that looks good. Chocolates. So I take one and then finish the one. And after 10, 15 minutes, I'll go back again. Oh, that looks good. I want another one. And within like three hours, I finish a whole pack of 45 sticks of chocolates. And that makes me feel good. So I realize, oh my gosh, I'm using action to compensate any emotion which I like. So how can I break that cycle for, with Coca-Cola too? Which is, I open up Coca-Cola, I take a sip, and I, and I ask myself, do I really want this? Do I really like this? No, I don't really want this. So why am I drinking this? So I said to myself, from today onwards, I will not drink Coca-Cola ever again. Just for the fun of it, of that thought. Then I bring myself with the Coca-Cola to the kitchen and just emptied it right the sink. And once I'm done with it, I said, it is complete. And there, I never had a thought of wanting to drink Coca-Cola ever again. And that felt liberated. Why? Not because that I managed to pour it away, but because I'm able to guide my mind. I'm able to guide myself to focus on something which I believe in that I can achieve. And I did it. Yeah, so you, yeah, so you was playing with the, uh, the idea of actually being in control of your own actions. My own thoughts. Yeah. Because okay, your my thoughts emotions. are saying like, yeah, I need, uh, you know, for example, most people's thoughts are telling them to do certain things, aren't they? Habitually going on and on and on. And they're telling them to do certain things. So whether it be lack, limit or whatever, we get caught in these cycles again, which we started at the beginning of the conversation. But these cycles of, of actually, actually, we're not in control of them. They are, they are habitual, unconscious cycles, mm. aren't they? That actually dictate our reality. Mm. You know, so so you're saying so you're saying basically it, 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 it's almost about it's very much about taking responsibility for our actions. But that's not easy for people, is it? It's not easy. Like you you did that because, you know, you was in that moment, you was thinking and so on. It can, but it's just not easy for people. It can be easy. Okay. Definitely. It can be with practice. <laughs> I like that. Everything's easy with practice. It's the, the practice that's difficult. <laughs> the ability to stay focused. Yeah to listen, the ability to choose and observe. These are the basic skills that I, that I believe that human beings should have. Say those again for me. The ability to choose. The ability to choose. To focus. Yep. To listen. Yep. And to observe. Okay. And these are the basic skills. That, it, that everybody should have or does have. The ability should have. Yeah. Um, and does have at some level too which is everyone has been choosing the things which they don't want more often than the things that they want. So little kids itself, when they're playing, and what, what usually parents do to them is like, oh, stop playing. We need to go and do this. We need to do that. And it breaks that attention span. So the longer, they, they will start to develop shorter attention span. And in the long run, they will not be able to focus well. They will not be able to to choose well because I'm always stopping myself to do something to satisfy what you want me to do. Then I'm not honoring, honoring myself in that space of interacting with whatever that it is. So it, these basic skills, I, I believe, that uh, should be developed. In fact, in, 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 the, in the meditation, in the spiritual community, um, in anyone who wants to know more about themselves, it always starts with what? Breathing, relaxation, focusing, listening, mm. observation, and all that kind of stuff. It's mm. all basic skills. Why, why do we need to develop this when we could actually do it when we were young? Yeah, it's already there. It was already there. Yeah. So it's just because we lack the, the, we're missing out the opportunity to polish these skills. It's like our third eye itself is not used as blunt. So you need to polish it. The more you polish it, the more you polish your, your, your listening, the more you polish your attention and to focus and to pay attention, you can enjoy so much richness and colors mm. the life that you live in. Mm. Because now you can pick up details, you can pick up, 
you're not attached to the details, but you're able to easily capture and see everything in full vivid colors. Yeah. It's like, and that, wow, that's just amazing. Yeah. So we have black and white television now, we have colored and we have high definition, we have the LED, we have all kinds of really high quality transformation of the consciousness while we have all these technologies right now yeah. to represent. Yeah, and, it's, it, it, yeah, and it's, it's, it's interesting that you say, I know that many times, and I've spoken about this, that, you know, we come to the idea of children because children are amazing in every sense, as we all are. But, you know, when you actually observe and watch a child in that present moment, they're there. They are just in that moment. They're, they're like one thought, one action, I always call it, you know, yeah. one thought, one action. That is it. I want the bowl, I go get the bowl, you know? Yeah. I want to eat, I go eat. I want to pee, it's pee, you know? It's like, it's time. So it's one thought, one action. But what's also wonderful, and I'm, I'm sure you've come across this yourself, is very much um, that then people talk about re returning to the child mind. Yeah, you know, have you heard that expression, the child mind? Yeah. So you're becoming a child again. Um, and that is because, or what I've evaluated on my own path is that because you do become more present, more playful, more aware, more focused, like you said, you know, you're seeing things, I'm, I'm going to say more so as they are. I still, I'm, not, I'm still not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself some space to, uh, to I evolve. I like to say I'm seeing things that are more like they are and they're more fun. Um, but I still think there's, there's, there's vastness to open um, from the fact that you know, I know like people like to blame. It's not about blame and saying that we, but we, we seem to have not had the ability in our current society, and this is not a blame on society and moaning about, you know, the world that we live in, but to nurture that. But I do feel that's coming. I don't know, maybe it's just because the, cir the circle of people that I'm, you know, meeting on this journey, but do you feel there is a, there's a new language of love coming? There's a new vibration, there's, there's there, you know, and I say new, some people say, oh, it's been there 6,000 years ago, the Vedas were there, you know, it's always been there, there's always been this underlining, you know, spiritual energy, if you want to call it that. But I'm on about, on a day-to-day, -day, ground level, the way that we're communicating, seeing each other, interacting, the compassion that we have, the, you know, the love, the communication, the sharing, the gratitude, the appreciation, that is really, I feel definitely, you know, transforming into more of the forefront. Do you feel that? I feel that the world is shifting into a great explosion of expression of love and compassion. Yes, definitely. I see the world as, for example, like, um, well, we can have so many different analogies. Kind of analogy of flowers, we can analogy of tuning forks, we can let's choose one tuning fork. So let's just say that we have now how many people on this planet? Well, last time I counted 6.5 billion, growing 6.9 in the next 20 years, maybe Probably 20. 14, 20 <laughs> billion. You know, it's going to be quite hectic. I'm going to be looking for hey man, can I get on the bus? <laughs> so the majority of humanity, let's just assume that it was, it used to vibrate at a range of sounds, of degrees, yeah? Maybe let's just say 1 to 50. And then you have this individual who decided one day to vibrate at 60, which is probably so different from 1 to 50. And this person who is vibrating on 60 says, I would really hope to meet people who will eventually vibrate at 60 with me too. And that slowly, when it's been expressed more and more, more from that 60 frequency, mm. it encourages more people to explore the possibilities, say, hey, 60 sounds cool too. Maybe mm. I can explore that and expand my space a little more to interact and experience it. And now we have more and more people experiencing the vibrations of love. And the excitement is the ability to co-create with others to feel that, yeah, we are resonating. I'm not, I'm not the only one that is vibrating <laughs> I'm not the vibration of love. Yeah. You are vibrating that too. Oh, and that feels good. The awareness, the awareness that our consciousness is getting so fine, finer and finer, that we can feel the quality of love, the texture of the emotions is getting more and more excited. That's what makes people feel excited because the consciousness is getting more refined. The consciousness, the perception of what is in our reality is getting more and more finer and finer. So your joy of interacting with the beauty that is on this planet is 
getting into the details of the texture, mm. the feeling, the temperature, everything. Mm. And in the past, it was like, oh, it's just this. It just is. Yeah. It just is. But now there's more to it. There's yeah. more. There's more to it. If you just feel, oh, oh, hi. Oh, I have a mole here. I didn't know that you exist. Mm. Well, good to know you. Yeah. So there's, there's this great expansiveness of consciousness of knowing more and more and more about that. And the more they know about all these little fine details and enjoying that process, the more they appreciate every single thing, every single leaf on the trees, not just all the collective, but yeah. individually and as a collective at the yeah, same time. Yeah, of course, yeah. There's the enjoyment of that. Yeah. The world is exploding into that, indeed. And that's the reason why I love hearing the voices of others. When I turn, when I sing, and when this sound triggers a desire within them to respond, I don't know why, but I just felt compelled to want to sing with you. And that they've created a resonance. Yeah, beautiful. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful metaphor and analogy. And it's happening. It's happening. Whether, you know, whether we're here or not, it, that, that awareness, that spread, that sort of uh, surge of you know, surge of solution, you know, solving as well, you know, it's like, uh, it's moving. It's just definitely, it's funny, it's last night, for example, I was, uh, I went to uh, visit a friend and um, when I was leaving, um, he said, oh, I need to put on this show. And I was doing some stretching with him. He, he does, uh, he's quite a big guy and I was stretching him. And um, he felt like stretching, didn't you then? <laughs> the power of <was> resonance. <laughs> and um, when I left, he, was, he had this program on, and it was a, it was about prison people being in prison, and it was uh, there was a character on there, and basically this guy is not he's not mentally ill, but he's he 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 doesn't want to be homeless, so he keeps c committing crime to then go into jail. And when he's in jail because he doesn't want to leave, he keeps urinating on himself and, and, and um, pooing on himself in his cell. And um, it's very, um, you know, it's one experience. He's creating that experience. And it was I, was, I was watching it and I was like, why? I said, why are you watching this? You know, it's like, because I don't watch television very rarely, you know, I'm not a big television man and, and so on. And I was just, I left there and I was thinking, for me, purely for me, that is the, I suppose you could say the juxtaposition, the, 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 the almost surrealness of the reality that I'm experiencing. Because you see all this, you fall into this place of awareness. You have so much awareness, focus, touch, looking at somebody so different now. You're looking at their eye and you're going through the eye of what they are and you're going into their body and this experience. I'm seeing the trees and the energy in this room right now and just feeling this room and, and you're there, right? You're having this experience and it's wonderful. It's magical and your interaction with people is changing. And then what's, everything's happening all at once in this universe. It's just completely, every single thing is happening all at once in this moment right now because you still have this level of, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just gonna call it unconsciousness or unawareness just for the conversation, you know, not to judge or to point the finger, going on at the exact same time. So it's funny, it's like although we are moving into that awareness, like you said, and we're seeing more things and so on, there's still a mass amount of that, um, or humanity as it were, that are still in a completely different space which is neither right nor wrong, but do you see what I mean? So there's people still experiencing extreme pain and suffering, extreme unawareness, extreme unconsciousness, you know, and so on. So I suppose the reason why I'm bringing that up, it just, it just come to me now, but it's like, it's almost having the ability to accept all of that rather than trying to control what's not good and what tr control what is good and go, yeah, it's all gonna be like love and joy and happiness and so on. But it's, all, it's not about that, is it? It's more about that, it's almost like it's always going to be there. It's never just going to be a utopian, beautiful world where everybody's vibrating in love and awareness. Or do you feel it is? It's never about others. It's always about ourselves. Mm. And when we feel expensiveness, when we feel good, then this energy will just explode like the cosmos. And you will just send it like waves across the entire planet and beyond. And very often when we're expanding, 
we experience contraction, which is when we see something which have an impact in our mind, our emotions, and we feel, wow, that's interesting. I didn't see that coming. But if we could just allow that expansion to continue to flow, which is the ability to stay in the stillness point and, and allowing the mind to be still and breathe and enjoying it. While it expands and you see something that is contracting, that you see something that is in opposition of that expansion, you see the positive expansiveness within that contraction. And that person who has experienced that suffering, whatever that it is, yeah. could be, yeah. will have a gateway somehow open up almost like a ray of light shine upon that person and says that, look, you can feel good again if you just allow. Because someone else just was able to see that potential and that power within that person. So when individually one person feels good, it will create a resonance, a wave, it will attract a whole wave of movement. And that energy will continue to spread forth as long as these individuals continue to stay in his own belief of feeling the expensiveness of who they are. Not needing to change the world again, but changing the perspective about how you see the world, which is you, essentially. So if you see the world which you live in is beautiful, then you will continue to send forth these beautiful waves to others as an inspiration, as an uplifter, to assist others to see the beauty within themselves too. Mm. then naturally they will be inspired themselves to do in their own ways and their own methods to inspire others. Then the waves just continue in that way. Yeah, which have been continuing for a long time, it which will. is why we're even doing what we're doing, because they've been continuing, haven't they? There's always been, there's always been that surge of... Um, I don't always like to say good, bad, positive, negative, purely because it's almost like that duality world where it's something, I don't know, sometimes I get a bit... Um, almost like the words that we use to express what we're experiencing are still man-made. And, and sometimes there's that, sometimes what comes up for me is that if we go beyond that, like, like what you were sharing earlier, if we go beyond who we are and beyond who the words that we are actually created, then sometimes I lose, there's almost like the words don't have any, um, uh, they, they don't like to say meaning, but they don't actually justify or give, give uh, a description to what it is that we're experiencing. Do you, ever, do you ever have that experience? Well, sometimes I change the word um, negative, positive to expansion, contraction, which is easier for me to use. And, but I always say to myself that why do I have to choose either left or right, mm. plus or minus, or expansion, contraction? Why can't I choose both at the same time? Mm. So I did a meditation to myself and, and I said, when I'm focusing on something and I look at a white, like this white, beautiful white wall and I have a black dot, on it. If I just stare at it, then I'm actually contracting. Contracting mm. in what way? Which is I'm focusing on that dot, everything else just disappears, but I'm expanding at the same time. Dot seems to be bigger. So I'm expanding and contracting at the same time. Can I accept that? Yes. So when I'm focusing on, on certain things, I'm focusing into it, which is a contraction, but what I'm focusing actually becomes bigger. Mm. The energy becomes bigger because I'm focusing on it. So the world itself is constantly playing in this way. If we feel small, we will get big. If we feel big, we will get small. But it is, it is happening at the same time. It is not taking, it, it doesn't take time itself. Time is basically just ourselves as we just stretch it out and say, oh, well, give me some time to breathe into it so that I can experience this in these various degrees. And that, that's wonderful. But when the world is experiencing so much contraction, is essentially it is expanding of the equal um, proportion at the same time. Yeah. It's the pendulum yeah. swing. Yeah. It happens in that way. Yeah, so it's all, again, it comes down to all, all is happening all at once and all is okay. Yes. <laughs> all is okay. All is okay. That's the, that, that's the most beautiful thing, isn't it? All is actually okay. Um, if we let go of the, the resistance to what we think is not okay. If I can accept you for who you are, for anything that you have said to me, for any actions that you have done, even though I may not know you, 
even though I've just seen it on YouTube, even though I've just seen it on the streets, even though I just read it from you on a magazine, but it can accept you for who you are, for being here as an existence on this planet. Then through diversities, I will achieve oneness. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Because I don't need to agree with you, nor disagree with you, to experience oneness with you. And if you're seeing yourself not as the individual, like you said at the uh, <coughs> close to the beginning, mm. then that person is you anyway. So you're seeing the other as you, because you're all that one okay. collective surge of unfolding nothingness. I love you for who you are, yeah. and I accept you for who you are. Yeah, yeah wonderful. That's quite a nice place to. Um, to bring it down, I felt like I was. With, I wanted to go into the, the realms of death with you just for the conversation, but I, we don't have time because I'm sure you've got some mm. nice things to share on that. I, I felt like sharing some stuff on death today, but that didn't come up. Um, <laughs> people are like, why are you so morbid, Simon? No, death is actually beautiful. It's part of this unfolding experience. Um, so we're coming close to an end. We've been on tour today. I feel quite peaceful. Um, in this location, and really relaxed. Yeah, I feel really relaxed, almost uh, not, not even al relaxed and alert at the same time. Mm. Um, do you feel like ending with some uh, some vocal sounds? Oh yes, that would be beautiful. That would be beautiful, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm feeling that would be nice. So let's do this together. Should we? Should we? Um, should we say goodbye now and we just end it with the sounds, or should we do the sounds and say goodbye? What are you feeling? The sounds will be the goodbye itself. Exactly. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Wonderful. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me in Yantara. I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed our conversation. Yes. Oh, no.